down. Oh my God, meatloaf. Meatloaf, meatloaf, meatloaf. Who here was a meatloaf fan? Anyone here? Heather Westgarth, were you? Sky Lease, were you? Jenny Scam? Lynn Sheard? Any of you meatloaf fan? I mean, I'd be hard pushed to say I was a fan of his music, but my God, that song, when it came out, it was like a bat out of hell. Um, obviously, I'm talking about the fact that Meatloaf has sadly passed away at the grand old age of just 74. Um, what a character, eh? Uh, uh, a statement, official statement on his Facebook page said that Michael Lee Ade, or Ade, the performer who sold more than 100 million albums worldwide, said, our hearts are broken to announce that the incomparable Meatloaf passed away tonight with his wife Deborah by his side. Uh, daughters Pearl and Amanda and close friends have been with him throughout the last 24 hours. Oh, it's never good, is it, when such big seismic characters um, pass away, isn't it? Uh, yeah, no, I wasn't, I wasn't an enormous fan, Julian Bar Barras, but uh, always sad, isn't it? Did he bite the head off a bat or, was, or am I thinking of Ozzy Osbourne? I'm sure he's kind of that sort of type, isn't he, who would, who would have bitten the head? I mean... What's the other name? Le Lemmy, is it? Lemmy? They're all... I'd imagine none of them are particularly, you know, soppy about such matters. I bet he was particularly phlegmatic. Uh, Claire Smiley, R.I.P. Meatloaf. Hi, Claire, hope you're well. Yeah, uh, gutted, says Julie Hilton. Best album of all time, says Jewel Broad. Uh, Faith Goodman, Alice Cooper is, an, is another, yeah. Did he bite the head off, off rat, rats or, or bats or something? Um, Sarah D, out. Uh, Stuart G, seen him live, he was fantastic. I bet he was. I bet he was. Um, he, there was a point where he used to pop up on TV a lot, didn't he? There'd, there'd be something happening on a chat show and he'd fly through from the back of set and just go run amok, wouldn't he? Um, no, it wasn't him. He was a lovely man. Oh, shame. I don't even know his proper name, but love Meatloaf. Well, I said it a minute ago. I didn't know, I didn't know his proper name. Um, I knew Meat. My husband toured with him in the 90s. He was such a lovely, kind man. That's what I hear. You often hear with a lot of these heavy metal um, types that behind this outward persona of kind of mental metal madness, they're uh, real softies, real softies. Um, yes, yeah, Sophia, I, I think I know the story regarding Meatloaf that she can't reveal. It's a bit... It's not rude in that sense, but it's a bit, it's not, not the kind of thing we're gonna to wanna to remember today. Um, Paradise by the dashboard light was my favorite. What a great just sentence. Paradise by the dashboard light. Um, I wasn't a fan, but his Bat Out of Hell album is a classic, says Nora Doyle. No car trip is completely without meatloaf and a sing-along. He is one of those ones that you smash your heads to, don't you? Uh, and scream like a nutter. Meatloaf was a vegan, but did not want to change his name. Can you imagine that? Nut roast. I wonder if he, I wonder if he ever thought of calling himself Nut Roast. Um, hi, Jacqueline Frost. Pink Lady. Longest songs ever, but amazing. Were they? Were they? Were they long? Were they long? <laughs> um, Mandy, author. Great tune. Spice World. The movie is what I think of him in. The Spice Bus Driver. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, hi, Sarah. Um, Christine Saunderson, we saw him live in 94 and he was fab, fabaloony. So that's sadly, yeah, meet, a couple of music stories actually today. Meatloaf, who sadly passed away. No cause of death has been given. Um, and uh, what would your rock name be? My oh, God, that's a good point. Isn't there some, isn't there one of those games where you take the name of your first pet, squish it together with your maiden name, is it? And that becomes your porn name? So my father's surname was Ball. Um, so I'd have been, my porn star name would have been, so first pet and mother's maiden name. So my mother hasn't, my mother's got her maiden name. So let's go with my father's essentially maiden name. I'd be Gus Ball. Oh, pet and first street name. Is that right? You get a lot of crescents and lanes and things like that. Um, Gus Ball, first pet, first street. Mm, that wouldn't work for me. Gus Blenheim. That doesn't work, does it? Uh, Gus Ball does, though. 
Meatloaf, AKA legend, Jules. I was lucky to meet him in real life and see him in concert. He was so kind and caring. He sent me his condolences last year when I lost my brother. <gasps> Did he? Oh my God, what a good, good man. What a good man. Hi, Fiona Cromack, nearly at 24 months, I noticed there. Um, gas, Gus Ball, not Gas Ball, Tracy Lynham, but yeah, Gus Ball. It's a good one, isn't it? As porn names go, it's a good one. Um, what can, we need to think of one for a rock star. Um, why don't we have, if he's Meatloaf, why don't we have something like, um, your first name has to be, okay, let's make your first name the name of your street, or the first name of your street, and the second name is something you, your favourite thing to eat in a breakfast. So, Blenheim, Blenheim Oats. Or Blenheim Bacon. Has anyone got a good one? If we use if we use that strategy. Mental Marky, yeah, Metal Marky. Fishing, please be careful, Mark. Those sites get personal info like security questions, answers. Be careful of fishing, everyone. Be careful of fishing. Um, High Mushroom, Lorraine Davidson. I'd be Shaw Bacon. That's good. East Porridge. Hamilton Porridge. Craig Sausage. <laughs> That's not bad, is it? Uh, hi, Andrea. Um, lots and lots of, of editing and, and working today. Broadheath Yogurt. Nelson Porridge. I'd be Walnut Bagel. Sarah D, Walnut Bagel. Eagle Crumpet. Mount Pleasant Banana. It's a bit, that sounds like a violinist, doesn't it? Napper's Pancakes. <laughs> Izzy Taylor. Regina Sausage. No. No. Is that true? I'd love that. St. Augustine Crumpet. You sound like a choir, Jules. Um, Regina Sausage. If that's real, Ali P, that's brilliant. Regina Sausage. You, you, sing, you sing ballads. Fern Flake Norador. Ringway Rice Crispy. Birch Egg Emma Black Pudding. Lower House Toast. Lower House Toast. That sounds like a, uh, the Lower House Toast. Toast, toast. Thorncroft Fry Up. The Angus Avocado. And here comes the Thorncroft Fry Up. This is it. Marmalade Butties King. Victory Pancake. Rest peacefully in heaven and hell, meatloaf. Dices don't Benozi. Um, Millersdale Crumpet. Uh, Paradise by the Dashboard is 8 minutes 25 seconds long. I like a long record. Um, Mutrix Tea. Carol Titmus. Still laughing from your shaving part in the... in the Oh, in the Cotswold vlogs, Zara D. Yeah, no, that was fun, wasn't it? Stupid. Watson Smoothie. Uh, Mutrix... There's quite a good strategy. I think something you like to eat for breakfast, couple... So first... Your, one of your first streets, not just your first, because mine was Blenheim. What, what would be another street that we lived on? Uh, Bennett's Bacon. There we go. Bennett's, Bennett's Avenue. Bennett's Bacon. Yeah. There we go. So Meatloaf has given us a new party game. Broadway Peanut. Great holic. Broadway Peanut. Beckhampton Bacon. James McBeer. Flipping Hungry Now, Linda Tyler. I think we've created a new game. Don't you? Uh, Woolerton Mushrooms. You sound like a folk band. The Woolerton Mushrooms. The Kinkora Crumpets. Nicola Higgins. Jill Broad, the Liverpool Chips, often playing support to the Beatles. Summer Bacon and their renditions of uh, Grease. Druid's Eggs. Dawny, are you joking? That sounds like a euphemism. Have you ever seen a Druid's Eggs? The Trent Mushrooms. Helen Groves. The Trent Mushrooms. <laughs> the Waldeck Ready Breck. No, no, the Churchill Crumpets, quite a sort of like a, a sort of brass band type thing going on there. Uh, Oak Dean Yogurt. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what that would be. It'd be a bit folksy, wouldn't it? The Oak Dean Yogurt. Um, the Main Road tr Shreddies. Drumtara Red Bull. Oh, you sound like a sort of Irish folk band. Happy birthday, Nikki. Nikki Ashfield, happy birthday. Are you here? I didn't see your name go up. Nikki Ashfield. Oh, there we go. Morning, my birthday today, 58. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nikki Ashfield. Happy birthday to you. What would your name be if you took your 
the name of one of your first streets, not just your first street, because it's a bit restrictive, and one of your favorite things for breakfast. Sunrising cornflakes. That's like a rave band, isn't it? Everyone's saying happy birthday to Nikki. Um, so, uh, so there we go. We've, uh, it was good, good tuning in with you. Sent, and we'll see you tomorrow. Central Sheddy's Torridge Toast. Rainbow eggs. Your tree is still, still up. I know. Please, could we finish with... Faith Goodman, are you fishing or something? Um, we are finishing with the BBC quiz today. You're absolutely right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, Meatloaf died. What about Adele? What about Adele? She was about to start her Las Vegas residency and just 24 hours before the opening night, she posted, I'm so sorry, but my show ain't ready. Half my team have COVID and it's been impossible to finish the show, she said, adding that delivery delays had also played havoc with her plans. I'm pleased to read that because I thought, um, not that there would be anything wrong with this, but it would be very inconvenient for everyone who bought tickets. I thought it was about her being too anxious to perform. But um, she was due to play the first of 24 concert at Caesars Palace. Uh, tickets ranging from £60 to £500. Um, there would have been her first live, live concerts in five years, but she, uh, she went on Instagram to apologise. Um, how would you feel if you had a ticket? I mean, I mean, I guess it, it can't be helped, can it? She should have given more notice. But yeah, that's the part of it that surprises me, is that presumably she would have known this way before the 24 hours beforehand, right? It is cutting it a bit close, Mickey Moo. Was it COVID or anxiety as it goes up to April 18th? Uh, good point, good point. Why couldn't they just start a bit later? Now... I think there's an interesting story to be had there, and I don't want to. I don't want to prejudge it, and I don't want to suggest it's something that it, that it that it isn't. Um, I'm just going to let Gigi out. Just one sec. Um, I don't want to prejudge it, or presuppose, or predict, or pre presage, or all that stuff. Um, but if it was anxiety, what I was just interested because before I saw what it was actually about, or what she was saying it was about, what would you do? What do you think she should have done if, due to extreme anxiety, she didn't feel she could go on stage? What would you have recommended she do? Natasha Milchin agree it's far too close. Dawny Harvey, if I'd flown out, I'd be peed off. But it's Adele. We love Adele. Uh, can't be helped if they have COVID, says Hillary Jones. Nora Doyle, yeah, 500 quid a ticket. Uh, Sarah Sutton, feel sorry for Adele, but some would have booked flights and time off and hotels to be there, I know. Um, Holly D, she said they ran out of time, which seems like a ridiculous excuse. Uh, GMTV said, COVID. yeah, no, I mean, they're, they're all saying COVID, but um, I just want to know if, if, oh, Christine Saunderson, we had tickets for her last Wembley concert, but she was ill, so it was cancelled. We had travel to London Hotel and everything. Ah, how did that work? Did you manage to recoup your costs? Um, Nicola Higgins, if she says anxiety, the press would rip her apart. Do, right, OK, so the press would rip her apart, but what if it was anxiety? Oh, here we go, there's someone saying. Kimberly Jones, if it was anxiety, admitting that would have been powerful and helped many. Yes. I mean, I suppose as long as there's some kind of contingency plan that could have kicked into place to make sure that, I don't know, people weren't out of pocket and people were kind of supported. Um, hi, Brenda M. Uh, at least she announced it and didn't get someone else to do it, Dawn Clara Coates. Yeah, we only, oh, Christine Saunderson, you only got a refund for tickets. I think that's the problem with Vegas, isn't it? So many people will have probably flown out to see her there. Um, Adele has got to put herself and mental health first. She has a family to look after first and foremost. Um, Paula Farron, FAS, it shows that she is wanting to give her fans a great show and doesn't want to give them anything else. She is class, I think. Chin chin. I think the point is everyone has a huge soft spot um, for Adele. And I think you're right. I think if she had announced that it was due to anxiety, I think she would have, um, she would have been supported and cradled and held. Though I think her team would have had to have gone into some kind of rapid turnaround on, on sorting shit out for people who bought tickets. Um, but yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not suggesting it is that. And I'm sure COVID is, I mean, COVID is, is, can be great cloud cover for other potential reasons. But um, I think it's a shame if it is to do with anything else. She didn't feel she could share that. Um, 
If she suffers from anxiety in general, then perhaps planning 24 shows in Vegas is a little ambitious, Nora Doyle. Yeah, I get what you're saying there. I get what you're saying. Um, so that's Adele. Has anyone else, has anyone got Alexa? Does anyone use Alexa? Is anyone struggling with Alexa this morning? Because uh, apparently Alexa is down, or Alexa was down. Um, Helen Groves, how's your Alexa? Has anyone, has anyone got issues with their Alexa? Or, or if they haven't tested it, try it now. Oh, yours is down? Yeah, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, Alison Fisher, yes, yes, mine is not working. Yeah, well, here we go. Alexa, it's going to be terrible for Nadia's dad, Teddy, because she's, she's his, his closest, nearest and dearest. Uh, Alexa down as users get error messages from Amazon devices. I've been screaming at my Alexa to play music for 15 minutes only to find the service is down. Alexa smart home devices appear to be down across parts of the UK with users getting error messages. So if your Alexa is down, it's, uh, it's just a temporary blip. But it just reminds you, doesn't it, how dependent on um, tech we are. Tech. We're dependent on tech, aren't we? We're so tech dependent. I uh, just felt I'd say it like that. Um, now, of course, the Ukrainian problem keeps going along, but do we want to depress ourselves? It's hashtag fuck off Friday. Hashtag fuck off Friday. Um, oh, come on, guys. Give us your best hashtags. Give us your best hashtag. Come on, give us a hashtag for Friday. Give us something else. Give us flashback Friday. Hashtag. Hashtag. Uh, hashtag throwback Thursday. I did one yesterday. Hashtag. Hash, hashbag. Let's do hashbag. Hashbag. What would we have done without a hashtag? How has a hashtag become so important? Why is it called a hashtag? Hash tag. Why is it called a hashtag? Hashtag FOF. That's good. Come on. Don't have Alexa. I just talked to myself, Dawn Claricoats. Yeah, a lot of us do. Hashtag have a nice day. We are Mark. I'm not addicted. Oh no, where's my phone? Hashtag feel stupid quiz Friday. Nicola Higgins, that's coming. Hashtag fun, fun, fun Friday. Faith Goodman. Hashtag thank God it's Friday. Alison Fisher. Hashtag strictly... Tour tomorrow, Andrea Liberatsky, hashtag Friday, hashtag s oh shit, sorry, hashtag hash brown, hashtag hashtag, has anyone ever done hashtag hashtag? Skylies, hashtag glad it's the weekend, looking forward to more photos from you darling, hashtag my Alexa's rubbish, um, hashtag hat trick mentions Friday, hashtag fucking fuck off Friday. Hashtag can't find the hashtag key on my keyboard. Yeah, it's option three, isn't it, on a, on a Mac. Hashtag going for curry tonight, Friday. What I sometimes like to do, what you should do is, if you're ever on Instagram, is try and find a hashtag that no one's ever done. Hashtag, I wonder if anyone's ever done, let's think of some that people might not have done. Hashtag, hashtag lick sweet and sour off my forehead. I bet no one's done that. Hashtag lick sweet and sour off my forehead. Someone pump it in and see if it's happened. Come on, let's do hash. Let's think of hashtags that, 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 that have never been done or never used. Hashtag farting Friday. I reckon that's, I reckon a few people have done. I reckon Nadia's done that a few times. Hashtag watching Boiling Point with takeaway tonight. Very good. Hashtag it's Friday five o'clock and it's Cracker Jack. That, I think there might be a few of that. Uh, Hashtag, let's have a thing. Hashtag, I got bauble stuck up nose. I don't think anyone will have done that. Did you ever used to do that thing when you were a kid where you'd say to your friend, I say, you'd say, I wonder if anyone's ever done this? In that order. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm getting at? Do you ever, so, sometimes as a kid, you'd think, I want to do something that no one has ever even conceived of. So sometimes, I don't know, I try and shove my tongue up my nostril, stand on one leg, hop, and then put my head in the fridge. And then, you, you know, you're sort of thinking, well, I wonder if anyone else would have ever done that in the history of man. So you can limit things because there wasn't a fridge before whenever fridges were invented. Do you get what I'm saying? Hashtag, we so loved your music meatloaf. Dried peas up the nose. Hashtag dried peas up your nose. Try that one, Jenny Scan. Try it on Instagram, someone. Hashtag dried peas up your nose. I bet it's not there. Hashtag tripped over my left ear. It, I wouldn't have thought it'd be there, but there are a couple of elephants on Instagram. It's kind of an occupational hazard for an elephant, isn't it? Tripping over its ears. Uh, hashtag we love Boris, good trip lollipop, counterintuitive, like your style. Hashtag Spurs, oh, Julie Naylor, was that a bit of a dig at Tottenham supporters? 
Um, hashtag Jürgen. Hashtag Jürgen. My name is Jürgen. I am a Finnish fintech entrepreneur. Hashtag unique child, Mary Jane. Hashtag flatulent feet falling for fun. But no one's done that. But it's not there, is it, Sky? Told you. Today, your mission is to post something on any one of your platforms, Twitter, Instagram, I'm banging the table like Boris bangs his lectern. What is his lectern? You have to go onto your social media today, you all have to post something with the most ridiculous hashtag that no one else has ever, ever thought of. Promise? Is that a deal? Should we shake on it? Shake on it? Say yes or no. Come on, is that a deal? Whatever your platform. Hashtag freaky farting for fuck off Friday. Lucy Williams, that's a good one. Uh, Sarah Watkins, this is a bit of a rude one. Um, <laughs> my butt, hashtag my butt is falling off. Uh, hashtag this hashtag has never been typed, David Shields. Very good. Uh, very, very good. Um, I'm a Spurs fan. We had a good win the other night, Julian Ada. <sighs> I just give up on football. Every year I think, yeah, I'm going to get into the footy, and then I just lose interest after about three matches. <sighs> hashtag, has anyone else posted this hashtag before? I wouldn't know how to use a hashtag. If you don't have a platform, hashtags are meaningless. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, so what have we done? Alexa, meatloaf, Ukraine. Every now and then I'm just going to say the Ukraine because actually it really frightens me and it makes my throat go... And I get a bit tight in the eyes. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, God, what's going to happen? And so one then just parks it to the side. Um, so Ukraine, not looking good. Uh, Austria, in Austria, they're going to make COVID vaccines mandatory. Wow, that's, that's quite something, isn't it? What would you do? Do you think vaccines should be made mandatory here in, the, in Blighty, in the good old UK? What do you think, guys? Could, could mandatory vaccines work? Obviously not for those who can't have them. I presume in Austria they have some kind of caveat for the uh, vulnerable and the uh, and what have you. Uh, 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 what everyone's favorite. Uh, no, 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 no. That's Toffee, she's very busy today. She's very busy. Uh, I, did a little, I did a little inventory of what was in her bed. And it was a lot. I'm telling you that for nothing, it was a lot. Uh, no, absolutely not, no. Even if you're in favour of vaccines, I think we all agree that mandatory vaccines here would be diabolical. Um, now, this is a funny story. Um, this is a real Friday story, this. Do you want to hear this? The woman dressing as a household item every day in January. Can you believe this? Is this true? What the hell's going on? So I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you some of these things. So, hang on, I'll tell you who she is. Taryn Devere has set herself the challenge of dressing as household items throughout January. This is a way of combating the depression and the blues that kick in uh, during, during this awful month called January. Um, and it's kind of fun. And, and I want you to tell me which is your favourite, which is your favourite uh, one, okay? So you, you saw on TV as a quality street suite, absolutely. So here we go, I'm gonna turn you around. So there we go, so there we go, look. We've got, she's there dressed as sink and pipe unblocker. There she is as Donegal fresh milk. Uh, there she is as quality street. There she is as sunflower oil. There she is as, ah, Bisto. There she is as a can of Guinness. What do you think, guys? What do you think? Which was your favorite? Why? Pink lady, good question. Why, why, why? Uh, in order to lighten, she's from Sydney in Australia, she, she wants to, she just wants to make things a bit more fun. It's a hashtag fun Friday. I think she likes that. She probably does hashtag fun Friday, hashtag fuck off fun Friday. Don't you think? We need this fun, says Creatorholic. Um, 
Mr. Veer has made a point of dressing colourfully for the last decade or so after coming out of what she described as an... Oh, well, hey, there's a serious element to this. Coming out of an abusive relationship. Just one second. Sorry, it's just, just the pose. Um, as part of, so she came out of, actually she came out of an abusive relationship. Um, as part of the healing process, she said that she started dressing more flamboyantly and coming out of myself a bit more. In doing the challenge, her hope was that she would bring a smile to people's faces during a tough time for many. Ah, oh, yeah, did someone just say Nadia needs to do one? Nadia needs to dress as a pot of Marmite or a, a jar of jam, or I should do a tub of Nutella. I think I'd look good as a tub of Nutella, but then I'd want to eat myself, which would be weird. Okay, so finally, it's that time of the day. Who wants the quiz of the week? BBC quiz of the week. Anyone got pen and paper? Pen and paper ready? I've got my pen and paper ready. Oh, I know the answers. Um, so let's have a look. Tell us if you're ready gone a bit too far. Uh, 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 uh. So let me just find it all. Uh, let me just find it, find it, find it, find it. Uh, so, where is it? Uh, 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 quiz of the week. Could you do, do, yep, you good to go? Got your pens and papers? It's the weekly news. As the row over, question one. As the row over Boris Johnson's lockdown behaviour and down the street parties rumbles on, a bid to get rid of him as PM has risen from a group of Tory MPs. But what was their plot named? The big dog plot? Plot? The red meat plot? Or the pork pie plot? We did discuss this actually, I think, last night on Wine O'Clock. So if you've been... You could, could, could have done your homework already. Pork pie, it's only me. Red meat plot, mm, is, it, is it more operation red meat? Red meat plot, good shot, blue, 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 blue. Sky lease, red meat, red meat. Lots of you saying red meat. That's why they're being tricky with their questions. Keep on coming, keep on coming. Does anyone remember the Melton, is it Melton Mowbray? Melton Mowbray. Um, I'm afraid so. It's the pork pie plot. The pork pie plot. A search, question two. A search has begun to find a monarch to run a remote island off the coast of Cumbria. Whoever takes the job on will be named king or queen of Peel Island. But which of these will not be among their duties? Running the local pub, carrying out urgent building repairs, or managing the campsite and toilets? Which of those wouldn't be your responsibility as the king or queen of a tiny remote island off the coast of Cumbria. I'll do it, says, uh, oh, I've lost your name. Boris Telling Porkers. Pub, Creatorholic Pub, you don't have to run the local pub. Campsite and toilets, says Faith Goodman. You wouldn't want to run the toilets, would you? Imagine being a king or queen and having to run the toilets. That's, that's, uh, that's royally awful, it's awful. There'd be a royal flush. Managing the pub, a lot of you saying managing the pub. The other second answer is toilets. Let's see, what would you not have to do as king or queen of your tiny island? <gasps> Carry out urgent building repairs, guys. None of you went for that one. You all went for the campsite toilets and local pub. I think all of you have gone, not gonna get seven today. A boy, question three, a boy from Wales is celebrating getting a GCSE in maths at age just nine. What grade did Leonardo, the nine-year-old, get? A, B or C? What grade GCSE did a nine-year-old boy from Wales get this week? A, B or C? I think he's going to put us all to shame. Oh, it's in maths as well. Dawny Harvey says B. Zoe Kiffin says A. Good Chip Lollipop says A. Lots of you saying A's. Matthew Godwin says A. Fiona Cromack, A. No, it was C. Flipping it, guys. Only Elizabeth Millet by the skin of her teeth and Linda Tyler said C. 
Okay, question four. Why did Britney Singer, Britney Singer, why did singer Britney Spears say she had issued a cease and desist letter to her younger sister Jamie this week, threatening to sue her? Because Jamie Lynn performed remixes of her songs? Because Jamie Lynn claimed to have helped write her sister's songs? Or because Jamie Lynn made things up about her to sell a new book? So, did she remix? Did she help write? Or did she sell a book? Book, says Faith Goodman. Good job, Lollipop. Book. Um, book. A. Songs. Sell a book. Oh, lots of majority of you are saying book. Sell a book. Write a book. Yeah, she's publishing a book about her. C. Oh, look at all of you saying C. You're absolutely correct. Question five. Soaring food costs and energy bills are driving up prices in the UK and causing inflation to rise to 5.4% for the first time in decades. Who was Prime Minister the last time inflation reached these heights? Tony Blair, John Major, or Margaret Thatcher? Hmm, I think I might know this one. So who was Prime Minister when inflation reached similar heights? Tony Blair, John Major, or Margaret Thatcher? Major, says uh, Faith Goodman, I think. Thatcher, Millie, Helen Groves, it's only me, John Major. Uh, Thatcher, Blair, says Ruth Blamford. Major says Dawn Claricotes, Katie Travers, Tony Blair, Fiona Cromack, Tony Blair. I'm going to say John Major. Yes, John Major. It's John Major. Question number six of seven. An American man accused of rape and believed to have faked his own death is facing extradition after being arrested in Scotland. What name was Nicholas Rossi using when the police found him on a ventilator in a Glasgow hospital? Was it Nicholas Brown, Arthur Brown, or Arthur Knight? This is a curious one. How on earth would any of us know this? An American man accused of rape, believed to have faked his own death, is facing extradition. But what name was he using when they found him on a ventilator? Nicholas Brown, Arthur Brown, or Arthur Knight? God knows, says Martin Hughes. Same here, I don't know. If you held a gun to my head, I wouldn't know. A lot of you are saying Arthur Knight. You're right. Blimey. How the hell did you know that? Paying attention to the news. Um, final one. Emma Raducanu, Emma Raducanu said she loves the energy at the Australian Open. But what did uh, open after her first round win against an American opponent, opponent Sloane Stevens? OK, so Raducanu loves the energy at the Australian Open um, after her first round win. But what do the two players have in common? They both have won the US Open while unseeded. They were both making their senior debut at the Australian Open. They were both the top seeded players for their country. This is a bit dry, isn't it? Unless you're a tennis fan. So is it A, they have both won the US Open unseeded, B, they were both making their senior debut at the Australian Open, or C, they were both the top seeded players for their country? Jenny, C, uh, some of you saying B, debut, uh, uh, the US Open champions, uh, 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 they're both unseeded. Okay, I think maybe A, you're all saying A. Yes, A it is. They both won the US Open while unseeded. So who got seven out of seven? I don't think many of you did because I think we all got one wrong completely. Who got seven out of seven? Give us your scores. What did you get? What did you get? Uh, you got four, says Helen Groves. Uh, five, says Millie, one, two, three. Uh, I think I got two good chip lollipop. Uh, Elizabeth Millet. Uh, one, three, Ali P. Five, Tracy Lynham. Five's good. Three out of seven says Sky. Five, Zoe Kiffin. Uh, I got one out of seven, Linda. Corabel one. Oh, well, don't worry, guys. We'll do another one next week. Um, so, guys, I'm going to scoot off. Hope, hope you have a lovely hashtag whatever the fuck Friday. <laughs> And um, whatever fucking Friday you want, I hope you have a hashtag for it. Uh, and a later today, there's the weekly rushes. Um, I think Nadia's doing a 16-8. And uh, I'm hoping that the, and the third episode of the Cotswolds madness lands on the channel uh, too. Um, stay safe uh, and have a lovely Friday. And uh, we'll, we'll see you later, guys. And there will be a members live at some point, but we'll always give you good warning of that 